every living thing is made up of cells. Your skin, blood, heart, every tissue and organ in your body begins its existence as a single cell that divides and divides again. The membrane of the cell is a bumpy film of fatty molecules. Proteins rise like trees from this oily layer to pump and channel minerals and nutrients through the membrane. Other proteins use their branches to trap hormones that activate the cell. Some hormones are small enough to slip through the membrane to instruct the cell to move, grow, divide, or even die. Larger hormones dock at the protein receptors. The receptors send messenger molecules to the enzymes and organelles crowding the cell. Some messages reach a network of tubes called the endoplasmic reticulum. Channels within the tubes then release calcium, triggering cell activity. Together, messenger molecules and calcium command microfilaments to contract or relax. They may also tell the cell membrane to recycle its components. Tiny honeycombs of proteins swallow up pieces of membrane along with hormones and their receptors. After ingesting its host, the protein structure falls apart, liberating a balloon-like vesicle into the traffic of the cell. The protein building blocks are then ready for a new round of ingestion. Mitochondria are organelles that provide the energy the cell needs to operate its pumps, motors and micro-machines. This miniature power plant uses motor proteins to cruise along microtubules on its journey through the cell. A thick soup of enzymes, micromachines and organelles, called the cytoplasm, performs the daily tasks of the cell. The chore of making proteins for export to other cells is carried out in the tubular maze of the endoplasmic reticulum. Our small hormones plunge through the cytoplasm toward the cell nucleus. Increasing numbers of microtubules signal the presence of the centrosome. The centrosome sends out microtubules that lengthen and shorten in all directions, controlling traffic within the cell.
The nucleus is the largest organelle of the cell. Guarding entry are the nuclear pores that sort incoming messages, rooting the hormones toward the genes. Here we encounter the precious genes, the carriers of heredity. Genes are long, thin strands of DNA wrapped around bead-like proteins. Within a single nucleus, the DNA necklace can be made of a hundred thousand different genes. A hormone, before it can find its target gene, binds with a nuclear protein receptor. This couple then joins with other couples on the crowded dance floor. Together they attach to the particular gene the hormone came to meet. The gene then relays the hormone's desire for the cell to grow, divide or die. To carry out the order, proteins gather at the site, forming a micro-machine that reads and transcribes the gene. The genetic code is read on the DNA double helix. The twisted strands of DNA consist of complementary pairs of four nucleotides, the building blocks of the genetic code. We can think of the nucleotide molecules as letters of an alphabet and the genes as books. DNA is a giant molecule made of atoms of carbon, hydrogen and other elements neatly organized into a double helix. As the micromachines twirl along the strand of DNA, they decipher the genes and transcribe them in the form of RNA molecules. Once completed, the RNA detaches from the DNA strand. The RNA then leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pore for the cytoplasm. There, the RNA will provide the code to make the proteins that carry out the hormone's instructions. If the order is to divide, the cell will make an exact replica of its DNA to pass on to the daughter cell. The process of DNA replication takes place in the nucleus where micromachines make accurate copies of the original. Specialized enzymes within the micromachines replicate the DNA at many sites along the strand. In preparation for division, the identical meter-long DNA strands condense. Enzymes and structural proteins engineer a sequence of packing, folding, and coiling. They supercoil into micron-sized packs of genetic information called chromosomes. Many other things are happening inside the cell at this time. The centrosome has replicated and microtubules grow in all directions. Mitosis 
The most dramatic event of cell division has begun. Now, pairs of sister chromosomes and a spindle built of arching microtubules occupy the cell center. At first, the sister chromosomes glide along these microtubules. Located midway along each chromosome is a disc-like anchorage called the kinetochore. It is at this site that the microtubules fasten to the chromosome. The kinetochore on each sister chromosome is captured by a microtubule from the opposite pole. The chromosome pairs oscillate between the two poles. This astonishing tug of war is orchestrated by an army of motor proteins and enzymes. Finally, the sister chromosomes are aligned as couples between the two poles. Pulled by the microtubules connected to the poles, the chromosomes suddenly split apart. The function of mitosis to produce and separate two sets of chromosomes and centrosomes has been accomplished. Now, a contracting ring pinches the cell across its middle, forming two identical daughter cells. daughter cells will grow and divide in turn. This is the amazing cell cycle, the basis of all life. Thank <laughs> you.